All right. The, these lectures and slide presentations, I hope you enjoy them. Uh, we, we, we make these slides uh, and we, we write up all this stuff and uh, we, we do it for a reason. We do it to have you encounter Jesus uh, in various innovative ways and, and I really enjoy this one. Uh, this is uh, really a fun one to uh, watch and, and think about and it really gets to the root and the meaning of Christmas. Uh, sometimes we've lost that. So what I've done uh, in this is I've, you know, of course, read many comic strips in Charlie Brown, uh, The Peanuts, uh, for many years. I've read several books, actually, on The Peanuts and, and Charles Schultz. And then I had the idea, let me do what I've done with some of the other lecture and slide presentations of uh, putting the theological uh, context to it. So I call this a Charlie Brown theological Christmas because we theorize of, uh, about the concepts of God as it relates to this particular slide presentation. What a beautiful picture, even though the, data, uh, the date is uh, from a few years ago. Uh, it's a beautiful picture of uh, Charlie Brown and Snoopy looking up to the stars. Maybe they're looking for the star of Bethlehem. Uh, so maybe you should look into the stars this Christmas and see the, and feel the province of God. Amen. So, the Charlie Brown Christmas special is over 50 years old. It's probably 56 years old now. The comic strip is full of introspection, empathy, regret, loneliness, and hope for a better day. I think we've all experienced uh, these. You know, it's my understanding that the holiday season is sometimes the toughest season for people. Uh, and uh, many of us experience loss and loneliness and regret and hopefully there's some introspection going on in your life. But what does this all have to do with our faith as Christians? The Peanuts Christmas special, like the Peanuts comic strip, was driven by an attempt to gain perspective about what life is all about. Charles Schultz, a devoted Christian, integrated Christianity and its tenets into popular culture. I mean, uh, he was masterful in what he did. I mean, I don't know if there is a more famous comic strip than Peanuts. And uh, there was always, or at least there was uh, oftentimes, uh, a Christian message. Now, we all know that this is probably everyone's favorite, where you ask yourself every time you see this question, no matter how old you are, if you're a young child or an older child, right? There's a lot of older children here today. Uh, but uh, you always ask yourself, why is Charlie Brown, how could he be that dumb to keep on trying to kick that ball when he knows that Lucy's going to pull it away. And I always ask myself the question, well, we're just like that, aren't we? We make the same mistakes over and over again, knowing what the result is going to be. And I think that's, uh, that's sin in our life. You know, We know what the result is going to be. It's not good. And at some point in time, we've got to realize, let's not try to kick that ball again. But the most beloved of, this, of these 61 comic strips showed Lucy pulling the football on Charlie Brown. But surprisingly, 560 other comic strips have a biblical or theological reference. That's a lot. 560, over 500 of those have a biblical or theological message. I love this picture here. This is really a great picture. Um, you know, there's a portion of scripture, and I uh, it's Matthew chapter 15, and and I would I read this one slide that we made, and I said, I think that's Snoopy's version, right? Uh, and all these years, I'm thinking to myself that that's Snoopy's version of Matthew chapter 15. I'm going to read this to you. And he answered, is it not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs? She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. So I, I went back to make sure that that was the right translation, and it was the right translation. So uh, Snoopy, uh, Snoopy got it right. So uh, Snoopy knew his Bible. Uh, my question is to you. Okay. <clears throat> oh, this is a good one. Religion to many people and dogs is like politics. Everyone has an opinion, but the Bible has truth truths that transcends time, place, and power. I mean, the Christian church knows politics, and they always get it right. They know who the right person is. They know what the right position is. Let me make a suggestion to you. Vote 
exercise your rights, but have scripture as the, the, the final say in all that we think and all that we do and all that we believe, right? I hear, uh, so, you know, Charlie Brown, I guess, wasn't as sharp as Snoopy. So Snoopy, I, I, I guess I, I like Snoopy because I, I feel like I'm a lot like Snoopy sometimes, right? I hear you're writing a book on theology, Charlie Brown said to Snoopy. And then Charlie Brown says, I hope you have a good title. You know, Charlie Brown's very concerned with it. And Snoopy, what did Snoopy say? Of course, I have the perfect title for the perfect book, right? And then Charlie Brown says to him, has it ever occurred to you that you might be wrong? And Snoopy's answer was, of course, no, never. And that's the American church. They're never wrong. They're right in politics. They're right on positions. They're right on everything. But really, the only person that's perfect was Jesus Christ. And the word of God is the words that we should live with. So what we, that always needs to, to, Snoopy needs to temper that it's not the perfect title. It may be a good title, but uh, there's only one perfect person, right? And, you know, Snoopy was visibly frustrated. Now that frustrated Snoopy, but at least every dog was smart enough to understand uh, uh, in the afterlife. Are you? Here's what Snoopy said in one of the comic strips. This is actually one of the comic strips. When I die, I pro I'll probably get the smallest room in heaven. So I thought about this, and I'm like, well, at least he has a room in heaven, right? And how many people aren't going to have a room in heaven? But I tell Snoopy that it's not such a small room he may have. <clears throat> this is a cute comic strip. This is an original comic strip also. These are all original comic strips unless we've uh, altered them, taken, uh, you know, editing liberty with some of them. Uh, in the Bible, are they just letters or words? I mean, do you read them as just another book? Do you even read it at all? Is your Bible like that dusty Bible in Ebenezer Scrooge that's got all the dust on it? Read me. Uh, in the Bible, are they just letters or words? Or are they more than that? They are eternally inspired words from God to us. And did you know that there's 3,566,480 letters in the Bible? Have you ever counted them? No. Well, I haven't either, so I'm, I'm assuming that that's right. Take us a little while to count that. And then there's 773,893 words. Have you counted that? Probably haven't even read them all. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, 34, Therefore, this is, I know this is my mother's favorite slide in the whole lecture. In all the lectures, this is her favorite slide. And it's the favorite saying. And maybe it'll be your favorite saying too. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite scriptures that I struggle with all the time. I always worry about tomorrow. I always worry about what's going on this afternoon or what I, what I have to do for work. And, you know, always anxiety and stress. And you just have to give that to the Lord. And you have that in your life, too. But li listen to these words that Linus said. Never worry about tomorrow, Charlie Brown. Tomorrow will soon be today. And before you know it, today will be yesterday. And then the punchline, I always worry about the day after tomorrow. I mean, pure genius. Yeah. Pure genius in this. I mean, this is fantastic. You may be surprised that Charles Schultz was a Christian. Unshell peanuts and you will find the fingerprints of his Christian faith. He converted to Christianity shortly after returning from World War II, and those days sparked a love for sacred literature and the Bible. It's interesting that after the war, everybody was going to church and reading the Bible and uh, pursuing God, and uh, I, don't, I haven't seen that lately. He read the Bible and theorized about biblical commentary. In the margins of his own personal Bible were a lot of handwritten notes, and I would suggest to you a lot of those handwritten notes became ideas for the comic strip. Charles Schultz, too, like I had mentioned about Professor Hunsinger, here's a man who is very wealthy, very successful, world-known, prominent, and he taught Sunday school most of his life. 
Charles Schultz was a longtime Sunday school teacher at churches in the Midwest in California. When he would move, he would still find a church and teach Sunday school. He once even led one study group through a study of the entire Old Testament. Well, I give him a lot of credit for that. That's a hard thing to do. He knew the biblical story well and was uh, committed to his Christian faith. His faith was in action. He actually lived out his faith, not only wrote the comic book and received many accolades and had a beautiful life from that, but never lost track of his roots and where he came from. Here's a picture of him. You've probably never even seen a picture of him, but you know, it's interesting this picture is, is a picture of Schultz and he died in 2000. But many suggest that, number one, that he looked like Charlie Brown, and number two, that that was his alter ego, Charlie Brown. And Charlie Brown was a lot of the struggles that he uh, contemplated in life. But uh, what, a, what a nice looking man, and uh, look at that beautiful picture. He's, can you see the picture he's drawing of Charlie Brown right there? Just, just a beautiful scribble there. Christmas time. Christmas time is a very special time of year, and there seems to be a peace that descends upon the community that is only there at this time of year, a peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace that only comes from above. Well, if you go into one of the parking lots of the local stores, you won't find that peace there, but, but I suggest to you that the peace is there if you look for it. Uh, you know, so when you go out into the night and you look at the beautiful sky and the stars in the sky, you can sense there's a peace of God that descends uh, during this time of year, unlike other times of year. Beautiful time. <clears throat> so here's Charlie Brown and Linus. This is uh, a picture uh, from the <clears throat> Peanuts Christmas uh, story from the TV. A little boy named Charlie Brown couldn't understand why everyone was so happy and joyful at Christmas, and he was sad. Maybe you feel set the same way as Charlie Brown this year. I've had great Christmases, and then I've had Christmases that I've been sad. So I, I think that's all normal. So what is Christmas all about? I have a list here. Number one, is it about getting gifts? No. Even though we all like to get gifts, right? We all want to get gifts from Santa Claus or people that we love, but uh, it's not all about getting gifts. Is it about eating a lot of food? Well, you know it's not about eating a lot of food. You don't need to eat a lot of food, right? But we eat a lot of food. Is it about buying stuff you don't need? Well, we either buy stuff we don't need or we get stuff we don't need. You know, I, I always tell my wife and kids, don't buy me anything for Christmas. There's nothing I need and there's nothing you can get me that I need that I can't get myself. Just, it's not about that. Number four, well, for Ocean County and Tom's River, drinking too much? No, that doesn't happen here. You could barely go by a place at night. I went, I drove by last night. I took a ride with my wife and we we're driving around and uh, the bars were packed that we were looking at. I, it was amazing. People like to go out and drink. I said to uh, Pastor John this morning, from Thanksgiving to New Year's is nothing but a month-long party. People go out, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you die. They're more concerned with eating, drinking, getting dressed up, socializing, partying, having a good time, decorating their house. I mean, I see so much nonsense. I wish I didn't have to look at social media, to be honest with you. But I know that right now, you know, with the church, we have to post things. It's just so much junk on there. And you get so distracted by looking at the junk, and you can't, it's almost you can't look at all this nonsense. Mm -hmm. And I see what people say and see what people post, and they travel, and they're showing where they're going, what they're doing, what they're buying. Oh, my God, it's such nonsense. But that's American culture now, and this is what we have. Do we shop too much? Well, we're guilty of that, right? I went to go buy a Christmas tree, and there were no Christmas trees left. So I guess people like Christmas trees and decorations, right? Just, just drive around. But Charlie Brown was pretty introspective. That's what the word introspective means, to, to think about things, to be introspective with oneself and culture and society. And Charlie Brown thought to himself, no, there must be something more about Christmas. And I, I don't think that's a bad place to be. I wish more people thought like that. Well, I guess he was so down that he wanted to go seek some help and talk to somebody, which is a good idea sometimes, right? But I don't know if, if Charlie Brown had the best of health insurance here because he sought out a, a, a doctor uh, in Lucy. 
I don't know if that would be my best selection here, but Charlie Brown felt so alone and isolated. And many times we feel alone and isolated, even when we're, you know, you can be with people and still feel alone and isolated. Do you know that? Charlie Brown felt so alone and isolated that he sought help from a psychiatrist, psychologist, Lucy. Do you feel that way? Well, actually, she is a psychiatrist. It says psychiatric help, five cents. The doctor's in, so what I'm assuming is a low deductible there, five cents, which is good for Charlie Brown. And she was a psychiatrist, which means she's a doctor. And she was available, so Charlie Brown sought her out. And then what happened? It didn't work out too well for the psychiatrist, I don't think, here. That didn't seem to help Charlie Brown. It didn't seem to help the psychiatrist either. Charlie Brown had become frustrated with the commercialization of Christmas. He wondered what happened to giving, sharing, and all goodwill to all. Has that been lost? Now remember, this was written over 50 years ago. Can you imagine if Charlie Brown and Snoopy were alive today? What they would be saying about the commercialization of Christmas? Here's a picture of Jesus I read to you before uh, in the offering. In the time of Jesus, the synagogue had become, you know, you can almost replace the word synagogue with church, right, in our culture and society. So let's just, let's just do that little exercise, a little mental exercise. In the time of Jesus, the church had become a place to transact money rather than a place of prayer and worship. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 13, it is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. Has the same thing happened to Christmas today? Do we celebrate its true meaning anymore? Do you celebrate its true meaning anymore? Or is it lost in the materialism of society today? Charlie Brown thinks something is wrong with him because he doesn't want to take part in all the holiday festivities. But is he wrong to feel that way? You know, would Jesus take part in all this nonsense that's going on today? What would Jesus do? Those are tough questions. If you look at society today, at even the American church, has it become commercialized? I mean, to me, when I look at Christian television, I try not to, but when you look at it, it's nothing more than a show. It's a, either, a, either a, a music concert or a, a big event. I, I don't think the disciples and Jesus, I don't think that's the way they went about preaching and, and teaching and making disciples. I don't think disciples are made that way. And I think that's the problem that we have now in the American church is that they're failing to make disciples. If you look at society today or even the American church has become commercialized, do they put an emphasis on raising money and programs? Have they lost sight of the most important things of religion much like in the time of Jesus? That's a very good question. I'd say the answer is yes to that. And individually, maybe you have experienced a life-changing event, loss of a loved one, loss of a job or finances, suffering sickness or health issues. That could take the joy out of you and the joy out of the Christmas season. You know, so I guess Charlie Brown's fairly down at this point in time. I've been there of you. Even Snoopy, Charlie Brown's dog, was in the Christmas spirit. This is what I, it looks to me when I drive around and I see all these houses decorated with all these things. Snoopy enters this decorating contest. Of course, he takes first place. He wouldn't take second or third place. Everything Snoopy did was good. But is this what Christmas has become? I mean, if you look on social media, that's what Christmas has become. Who can decorate their house the best? You know, like... Uh, Charles Griswold, no offense to Charles, we like we love Charlie Griswold, right? You know who that is, right? <clears throat> is that his first name? Clark. 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 Clark Griswold. Looks like Charles Griswold, but he's a Clark Griswold. Thank you for that. I know you'd have the right answer. You know, I'm sure you've seen that a few times over the last few years. Charlie Brown tried everything. He even figured maybe getting a Christmas tree would make him better. Well, uh, Dennis actually has Charlie Brown's actual Christmas tree. I'm going to show it to you here. We actually have Charlie Brown's original Christmas tree that Dennis has procured. Uh, and here we have it. 
So for those of you that wanted to see what Charlie Brown's Christmas tree was, this is the original Christmas tree that was used. Well, I shouldn't be fibbing here, right? Uh, but, but it's been used. That's, that's true. We've, it's been used before. We've used it. So this is Charlie Brown's beautiful Christmas tree. Uh, probably not the one we would have selected. But Linus, his best friend, always had words of encouragement for Charlie Brown. Isn't it good to get encouragement from a friend when you're down? Sometimes just a kind word. I, uh, a funny thing happened to me the other day. Uh, feeling down for Christmas, you know, struggling with, uh, with issues uh, during the Christmas season. I was walking down a street in Manhattan. It was with my wife and my other son. And uh, where we live is predominantly Jewish. And uh, a rabbi came up to us and said, are you a Jewish family? I said, well, well, yes, part of it. He's like, well, do you have an, a menorah? I said, well, we do have a menorah. We always put a menorah in the window in, in New York. And uh, he said, well, does your menorah, ha is it candles or is it light? I said, no, it's an LED. You press a button for each day and you put the light on. It's, he goes, oh, no, no, no. And he went and he got me a menorah, a brass menorah, and candles. And said, you're righteous. Here's menorah for you and your family. And we went home that night. We had a little celebration. And, um, you know, uh, he was so overwhelmed to know that my wife was from Israel. And uh, my son has been to Israel and studied in Israel and went for the birthright. So he was overjoyed that. And I, I, said, uh, I said to the rabbi, well, uh, how'd you, why would you come up to us of, of all the people on the street? You know, it's a dangerous thing to say, are you Jewish to somebody? He goes, well, I just knew. I said, well, I'm not, but I am. You know, so it was a beautiful encounter. I guess the Lord sends you those things when you need it, right? <clears throat> so, so, you know, Char Charlie Brown picked this Christmas tree. He picked the tree that nobody else wanted. Boy, there's a lot of theological message in here. Just like how Jesus was born in a dirty old manger that no one else would choose. Everyone laughed at the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. But here's what Linus said about the Christmas tree. See, he saw the Christmas tree a little bit differently than everybody else did. He said, I never thought it was a bad little tree. Maybe it just needs a little love. I think it's a beautiful tree. The simplicity of it, right? To get into the Christmas, get, to get into the spirit of Christmas, Charlie Brown thought to take part in the annual Christmas play by directing it. I don't know how that's going to go. You know, we look for God in all the wrong directions, right? His best friend Linus is trying to explain to Charlie Brown what Christmas is all about. Linus drops his blanket. No one could believe it. I mean, you know, dropping this blanket, that's Linus's actual blanket too, by the way. No one else could believe it. Sure enough, as Linus repeats the scene between the angel and the shepherds and says, Fear not, the blue blanket falls from his hand. This beautiful blue, he dropped his blue blanket. But why should this matter, you may wonder? Because the whole character of Linus is marked by his inability to leave behind his security blanket. See, all of us have a security blanket. It may be a little bit different than the blue blanket here, but we have a security blanket. See, when he left behind his security blanket, it was a sign of him still being a little kid and a sign of his own fears. Yet in this scene, we see Linus, surrounded by light, cast away his security blanket as if no, it no longer offered the meaning and the protection he so long believed. Linus embodies the gospel at that moment. Not only can he say, fear not, but he actually leaves behind his fears that his newfound courage propels him in front of all his friends to announce the good news of the birth of a Savior, Jesus. We have to leave behind the past. We can't change the past. We can only go forward with God. So we have to leave the past, leave our insecurities, and leave our fears because having those is just a lack of faith. That's all that is. You know, we can, we can, get, we can go into despondency, despondency very quickly without faith. So we need to have faith. Linus confront, confronts the secular trappings of the Christmas season 
by reading a verse from the Bible about the birth of Jesus. Taking a full 51 seconds to do it, the network executives were not amused by this Bible story and they demanded its removal in the television show. But Charles Schultz said this, if you don't leave it in, you don't get the show. And he stood on his Christian principles. Not only did he stand on his Christian principles, but he realized that the whole precipice of the whole Christmas story was that portion of time when Linus made this announcement. And this is the announcement that took 51 seconds to read. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord came upon them and said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And this is Luke chapter 2, 8 to 14. So the conclusion is this. There is no better teacher than the Holy Spirit and no better text than God's Word. That's what a good church would teach. There's no better teacher than the Holy Spirit. We're just conduits. As the great Swiss theologian Karl Barth said, a great theologian is only a mailman. He delivers the letter. He delivers the message. He doesn't write the letter. He doesn't alter the letter. He doesn't change the letter, but rather he just delivers the letter to the person. And that's what a good theologian should and would do. And that's what a good pastor should and would do, is just be a good mailman. There's no better teacher than the Holy Spirit and no better text than God's Word. So the conclusion is this for all of us that you know, maybe this Christmas is a wonderful Christmas. Maybe you're excited about so many different things going on in your life. Well, that's wonderful. That's a blessing to you. But then maybe it's not such a good Christmas for some of you. Maybe you're struggling with whatever issues it may be, loss or whatever struggle or difficulty you're having. But know this, there'll be good Christmases and there'll be challenging Christmases in your life. But know this, you're never alone through all of them. And I would suggest sometimes in the tougher and more difficult Christmases, they become more important and Christ is more prevalent in your life. The name Emmanuel means God with us. All of the names that are given to Jesus in Scripture, this one is probably the most comforting. I know it is to me. God is not a distant divine being who demands our worship. We have an up-close and personal God who lived and breathed among us as Jesus and who continues to be with us today. In fact, Jesus' last earthly words are this, I am with you always. So take comfort this Christmas and remember that you were never alone. God is with us. Let me read that again. That is so comforting to me. But these words need to penetrate not only our minds, but our hearts and our spirit. The name Emmanuel means God with us. Of all the names that are given to Jesus in Scripture, this one is probably the most comforting. God is not a distant divine being who demands our worship. We have an up close and personal God who lived and breathed among us as Jesus and who continues to be with us today. In fact, Jesus' last earthly words were, I am with you always. So take comfort this Christmas and remember that you are never alone God is with us. So from Charlie Brown and Snoopy and Linus and Lucy and all the gang, uh, not only of the Peanuts, but Tom's River Community Church, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you.